Hello, hello, Mana here, and welcome to the demo for the King's Final Act. This is from the same game jam as just opened it already, and it looks really good. The art style really caught my attention. Uh, I believe it is quite a short demo, and uh, it is planned to be a full game and with five endings, so yeah, no, it should be good to check it out, and if it's good, we'll uh, hopefully pick up with the full game down the line. But uh, yeah, it says, uh, you're a detective. On a slow night like any other, you get a call. There's been a murder at Chambers University. The voice on the other end seems to believe that you're the only one that can figure out what happened. The scene that was set before you arrive is off, and it's up to you to figure out why. Okay. Yeah, that's about all I know. Link in description. I hope you're doing well, and thank you for watching. Controls, all good. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Another foggy evening, dust scrolls into your office in shades of yellow. You breathe in nicotine and exhale smoke, suspended golden in the low light. The pole of silence breaks when the phone rings. The sound is almost foreign to you. Yeah, see, I, I really like the art style. I don't know if it's like, it looks hand drawn, right? I mean, I can't tell if it's digital or it's actually like a pencil and paper scanned in or something, but either way, very cool. Now phone, I do want to answer you, but there could be other things to click on. Can't go out like this. I'll need my gun and badge. Oh, that makes sense. Probably should also answer the phone, huh? You pick up the phone and press the receiver to your ear. Someone's heavy breathing clots the other line, beating through in rhythmic bursts of static. There's been a murder. This is a private agency. If there's been an emergency, you need to call the cops. Can't trust the campus police. Can't trust anyone from Chambers. The voice is low, distorted by poor connection, rambling. You catch a few unintelligible mutterings, words you don't quite understand. Alright, slow down. You're calling from the university? You're not gonna find him. Him? I'm calling from somewhere. She's dead, detective. Come to Tennyson Hall, the auditorium. The police have already been. They took the body, took the statements, took their leave. The stage is set, and it still smells like blood. Click. The line goes dead. Humming a one note tune into the shell of your ear. You set it down, taking a drag from your cigarette. Part of you considers ignoring this strange, unsettling phone call. The greater part of you loathes leaving any question unanswered. More than who you are, this is what you are, a detective. A finder of secrets, and an answer of questions. Okay, well, I guess we're off. We need gun, that, that works. You picked up your gun, better safe than sorry. Well, there has been a murder, so yeah. Your PI badge. It's more recognizable than your license, so you carry it. Although in your experience, cops don't care if you're licensed or not. They loathe to share a crime scene. Hmm, okay. I'm assuming with the red sparkly things, like there's not gonna be anything else to click on. Okay. You sweep out of your office with your gun at your hip and a badge in your pocket. Evening in the city, you hear alarms in the far distance, the squeal of tires, a horn honking. There's a cab lurking on the corner. Yeah, I think I think this was a screenshot as so well. I really like the like the splash of color with the car and yeah, it's good. Now there may be no sparklies, but I will try things. Okay, taxi it is. Evening, sir. Where are you headed? Chambers University. Can you drop me off at Tennyson Hall? The driver nods, gesturing for you to climb into the car. You settle in the back. The smell of cheap leather and sweat. Your mouth aches for another cigarette. Name's Ed. Ed Sheldon. You some kind of detective? That's exactly what I am. Head on in the news a girl got killed at Chambers. He says this like it's a puzzle piece slotting into place, justifying your presence in the back of his beat up old cab. You don't feel the need to confirm his assumption. You ride in silence, wondering, why you? 
It's a 20 minute ride to campus and another five for Ed to track down Tennyson Hall. You step out into the growing darkness, pulling a wad of singles from your pocket. You pay your fare. The driver looks you up and down before rolling up the window and driving away. This part of campus is quiet. There are a few students milling about, but the auditorium and the imposing labyrinth of police tape around it dissuade anyone from coming too close. Time to investigate then. Although, like, is this okay? I mean, well, it's fine for the game, obviously. I just mean, in general. Is this, like, a questionable move for a PI? It feels like it's probably questionable. But I guess he's intrigued. I need to check out the crime scene out back. Uh, this way? This way? Uh, where? Oh, I see. Orange cones form a relay around a mess of tape and a white chalk here. You tread carefully, taking in the outline where a body once lay, curled in on itself on the narrow strip of asphalt. It looks so small. A girl was killed. That's what the driver said. How old would she have been reasonably if she attended chambers? Your mouth presses into a grim line. Oh, there we are. <laughs> I was like, I thought it was loading for a second there. Oh good, I'm a detective, it's fine. I know things. A stale stench wafts from the dumpster. No one will be empty in anytime soon with the crime scene tape cordoning off the alleyway. I should take a look at the crime scene first while I have a chance. Sir? Sir, you can't be here. You turn to find a woman. Quiet fury burning behind her glasses. She's outraged to find you here, you surmise. You're accustomed to this reaction. The awkward uncertainty before you flash your badge. You fish it from your pocket and hold it out to her. I'm an investigator, man. Just doing my job. I mean, sort of. She relaxes, but only a fraction. Her expression dubious. The police were already here a few hours ago. I'm with a private agency. May I ask what you're doing here? I'm the theater director. I am I was in charge of tonight's production. Obviously now there aren't going to be any performances. Understandably, the girl who was killed, did you know her? Of course I did. She was the understudy for our female lead. I've worked with her for months. Her demeanor breaks for a moment, her hostility towards you faltering. She looks at the chalk outline and allows her shoulders to sag. This makes her look older, more fatigued. You notice the grey at her temples for the first time. Would you like to come in? The police already interrogated us, myself and the performers. But if you think you find something I didn't... A note of hope in her voice. The kind you hate to see flicker out. Maybe you will find something. Maybe the anonymous caller chose you for a reason. I mean, I feel like the implications... It, unless there's like weird supernatural stuff, of course. Then it gets, you know... It's always a possibility. Um, but I assume the implication is meant to be that the caller is a killer. But, I mean, maybe not, I guess. It, get, it gets more weird if it's not the killer, though, right? Hmm. I'll do what I can, ma'am. She motions for you to follow and lead you to the front doors of the auditorium. She reaches for her pocket, then sighs almost to herself. Oh, of course, they're unlocked already. The large double doors creak open, revealing rows and rows of tiered seating around a well-lit stage. The space built for an audience of hundreds engulfs you and the director entirely. If you whispered, the words would carry miles. There's one person. There's one other person sitting in the auditorium, pacing the length of the stage. It's a young woman with thick red hair. Each click of her heels on the floorboards is gunshot loud. As you draw closer, you see that she's mouthing words to herself. Who are you? I love how her name is just the diva. <laughs> her voice is high and clear, but laced with derision. She lifts her chin, staring at the director. Is this going to go on all night, director? 
This man is a private investigator. He's here to ask a few questions. Where are the others? Backstage, probably. Making out or something. I highly doubt it. Not after the afternoon we had. The diva relents, flushing her brow, knitting into a reproachful look so compelling you're certain that she's practiced it. Everything about her feels practiced, polished to perfection. It's not like I don't care, but all that rehearsing, all that build up. If we don't perform, then what's it for? Then it's for nothing. Like, I don't think that's what she would have. Enough. Take a break. Be ready to answer the detective's questions when he needs you. The diva snaps her gaze to you, too proud to give in without one final scolding look. She stomps to the edge of the stage and takes a seat, letting her legs dangle off the side. The director gives another weary sigh and keeps walking, leading you behind the stage into an isolated office room. You're surprised to see a young man seated at the director's desk. His head is caved towards his chest, his breathing methodical. He doesn't look up at you. He's the one who called the police. The one who found the body. I see. Was he involved with the production? No, he's not one of my students. I don't know anything about him. The police barely got a word out of him either. From what I understand, the scene was... She trails off. Giving the young man a pitying look. You think of the chalk outline in the alley. In the light of day, would you still be able to see the stains? Would you be able to guess what level of hell this poor boy walked into when he rounded the corner? I haven't convinced him to go home yet. He might have better luck. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> that's rough. I really like the, the little splashes of colour. Really works. I see the red shiny, but... There isn't much of use on the director's desk, which is kept very neat. Aside from a few family photos, there is a thick stack of paper. It's some kind of screenplay. You pick it up and rifle through. The last clue it's called. It appears to be a rough draft. I guess we better chat with him. Oh wait, can we talk to you anymore? Oh, wait, wait present? Is that, uh... I don't, hmm. Oh, I guess I'll interrogate? I don't know. I don't know what pre like, is that me like present evidence? Present a conclusion? I, I don't know what to make of that. Can you tell me more about what happened here tonight? I can tell you all I know. Our understudy came to my office this morning asking for the keys to the auditorium. I didn't think it was unusual. Our last rehearsal was yesterday, but it's not normal for the students to want to practice as much as possible before opening night. I gave her the keys. I assume she must have let someone else into the auditorium, or else forgot to lock up. I have no idea when she actually got here, but I got a phone call from the dean a few hours ago. He told me what happened and had me come to the auditorium for questioning. The police interrogated me and our two lead actors, as well as our stagehand. They seem to think the murder might have something to do with the play itself. Why do they think so? She gives you a rueful smile. It depicts, a satir oh. it depicts a sacrificial ritual in the final act. All of the characters die. And your understudy was killed in a similar way as described in the play? Oh god no, thank goodness. But the police were still curious about the subject matter, understandably. That and the fact that there are only two speaking roles caught their attention. There was a lot of competition among my students for the parts. Maybe the police thought someone killed our understudy out of jealousy? She doesn't look like she wants to think about it too hard. Pondering the motive means pondering the murder. Pondering the pain and fear her young understudy must have endured. Wouldn't it make more sense to get your lead actress out of the picture if that were the motive? Maybe whoever did this confused them. They did look alike. Or maybe the police aren't on the right track at all. It's worth looking into. Do you have a copy of the play I could look at? Uh, the police took both of my printed copies. One of the actors should be able to give you theirs if you need it, though. Please tell them I okayed it. Hmm, okay. Do we have... Okay, we have a save. Good, good. Oh, okay, we do have, like, items here. Hmm, okay. Because I just... I didn't know what present means, and I want to kind of check that first. First, we'll interrogate again. Just to make sure it's not different. 
Okay, that's the same. That's all good. Now, we'll check what present is and if it's some... I just don't know if it's like present a conclusion it's going to force you into it or something. You just, you just never know. So, we can load if we need to. Oh, okay. <laughs> present gun? Well, let's start with the last clue, perhaps. I found this on your desk. Did you write it? Was that a flash of offense in her eyes? She looks down at the play, her nose wrinkling. Oh, no, no. That belongs to one of my students. She's been helping as a stage hand, but she's got her ambitions, I suppose. She asked me to review it. I didn't have the heart to tell her what I really thought. If you see her, can you give it back to her? I'll do that, unless it seems relevant to the case. The murder might be related to the show you were putting on. We were rehearsing a proper play, not that dribble. One of the actors can spare you a copy of the script if you think it pertains. Just tell them I asked you to. Okay... I'm gonna oversave, don't mind me. Yes, detective, I've seen your badge. I do believe you. Feel free to ask your questions and look around. Now, oh crap, okay. Let's just get through that. And I wanna see what presenting the gun does, but it feels like a bad idea. Oh, you frightened me. Please be careful with that. We've had quite enough tragedy for one day, okay. Fair enough. Um, and yes, I'm saving again. Don't mind me. Oh, okay. It seems like I've got a few people to talk to then. Hmm. Last clue? Drivel. Excuse me? The director called that drivel. And directors direct so they know ev they have to know everything. I'm not sure that's the case. It's the right case but the wrong clue, right? What? Okay, I was thinking more shaken up. He's just kind of... something. Hmm. Why do they call it that? A private eye. Because most people do what I do are public servants, employed by the government, and I'm not. And it's I, not I, as an investigator. Oh. You sound disappointed. This is a interesting person. Gun! No, it was a knife, I'm sure. Are you referring to the murder weapon? What can you tell me? What did you see? I didn't see the murder weapon. Just more blood than a bullet can bore. Are you alright? More blood than a bullet can bore. That's an interesting sentence. Hello there. Can I ask you a few questions? The witness nods mutely, staring a hole into the floor rather than look at you. Seeing the body must have shaken him. You recognize the telltale signs of shock. He's barely there. I'm sorry to ask, but can you tell me what happened? As much detail as you can provide would help. Help who? Well, everyone. Anyone who may be in danger while there's a killer near campus. Too late to help everyone. Way too late. His hand flickers upward like a startled bird, fingers nervously scratching at his neck. Yes, I'm sorry. You're right about that. But if I can put together what happened, it'll help everyone here. No one left. Hmm? We're, st we're all still here. Never mind. Could you tell me why you are in the alley this afternoon? And if you saw anything that could help my investigation? The witness begins to shake. He jerks his head back and forth and a few, tear few, uh, a few tears spill free. They roll down his cheeks and darken his shirt where they fall. It was like that when the cops asked too. I'm not sure what he saw. They cleaned up before I arrived, but I gather it was horrible. You may not get anything more out of him, detective. Please don't push. Right. Your biggest lead ought to be a wellspring of information, having witnessed the crime scene fresh, but it appears to have jostled something vital loose upstairs. I mean, yeah, he's re some of his response is very... odd. Hmm... Okay. Now, I'm assuming it's going to be these two. And then we'll go out to the diva. Hmm. Also, can we look around here at all? No, okay. Let's chat with these two. Maybe we'll, we'll go interrogate first, then the present stuff. Hey, you must be the detective, or the private investigator. I don't know the difference. Detective is fine. I'm sure you've had a long night. But do you mind if I ask a few questions? 
Yeah, of course. If you think it'll help, ask me anything. Eagerness exudes from him. He wants to be of use. He's classically handsome with dark hair and large blue eyes. They shine earnestly in the dim light. What do you know about the murder? What happened tonight? I wish I knew more. I wasn't here. Our last rehearsal was yesterday and we weren't supposed to meet again until a couple hours before the show. So the murder happened sometime before then? Yeah, a couple hours. The police think anyway. He pauses, his face going pale. A shadow clouds his friendly demeanor. I knew her pretty well. The victim? Yeah, we'd... He glances at the stage hand, who is pretending not to listen to you. She's staring at the curtains. If the acute concentration in her eyes could burn a hole through them, they'd pierce the actress on the other side. But her shoes angled towards you, belying the true focus of her attention. We dated for a bit. Pulled around more like. But I think she's dead. It's awful. Seems odd that she was here all alone several hours before the show. Did she say anything to you at all about coming here or why? No, we hadn't been talking much. Not since I hooked up with someone new. I think she asked the director. The director has the keys to the auditorium, but we can't get in after school hours unless she lets us inside for rehearsals and stuff. I see. Thank you. He reaches out, grabs your arm. The unexpected familiarity prickles your skin. Do you think you'll find whoever did this? We can hope. If you don't mind me asking, there was no bad blood between the two of you, was there? Sounds like you had a breakup. We did, yeah, but I would never hurt her, I swear. Mm, what about your new partner? The other person you hooked up with? Would there have been any jealousy there? Any reason to harm the victim? Well, you can ask yourself if you want. His eyes linger on the stagehand, who is now fidgeting with the hem of her shirt, looking mortified. Ah. I really don't think anyone would have had the heart to hurt someone. No matter what the reason. But when you find who did it, I hope you make them pay. Make them pay? Yeah, they should be in jail, right? It's the least they deserve. He releases you suddenly like he just remembered you're tethered. I'll see what I can do. Thank you for your time. No problem. You're tempted to believe that he's truly distressed by today's events. But then again, he is an actor. Hmm, that's he's the lead. It's interesting. Hey, look at you, and it's heavy too, not like a prop. That's cool, man, real cool. Okay, gun. Dude, is that real? Sick. Wish I had a gun about now. Okay. Oh, babe, it's your play. Oh. Okay. So it's her, okay. She, she's, I guess she's kind of number one suspicious right now, but I feel like it's not going to be that simple. And it's not heavy suspicion, but, you know, in terms of what we have. Oh, babe, it's your play. So cool, right? She's so smart. I found this in the director's office. Does she ever consider putting on plays written by students? Maybe sometimes? I don't know. I just auditioned because it sounded fun. I don't know the director super well. Speaking of which, do you have a copy of the screenplay for tonight's production that I could look over? Sure, I don't think we're going to be putting on a show for a while, you know? Not with everything that's happened. I think it's in one of the dressing rooms. We were, um, practicing some of the later scenes. Do you want me to go get it? Um... Let's say not yet. I don't know why this is a choice. Okay, just let me know when you want it. Whenever there's a choice, I am suspicious. Like it's going to trigger something or... So we'll at least talk to her first. Yeah, because I want to cover everything. Hello there. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about what happened tonight? Sure. I don't know much, but sure. This girl appears younger than the actors involved with the play. Her hair is pulled back of her face, her eyes obscured by the glinting lens of her glasses. She holds herself like a person accustomed to being overlooked, shrinking in on herself under scrutiny. Can you tell me about the victim? She was the understudy for our lead actress. I didn't know her well. Not as well as some of us, I guess. She seemed nice. Kind of ditzy. You said others knew her better. Was she close to any members of the production? You could say that. Sorry, I mean, yes, my boyfriend was seeing her for a while, the, um, lead actor. I wouldn't say they were close, but he knew her best, and the director knew her well enough, too. The director led her into the auditorium early today, is that right? I guess so, no one else could have done it. Do you have any idea why she would have been here so early? Was that usual for her? She 
chews her lip and fidgets with her shirt's hem, worrying it, worrying it between her fingers. Your questions are making her anxious. No idea. If she practiced outside of our regular rehearsals, then I wouldn't know about it. I only had to deal with the actors in the past couple of weeks while they did dress rehearsals. They needed sets to be changed out and props and stuff. I see. Can you think of anyone, anyone at all, who would have might have wanted to hurt her? The lead actress, maybe? They argued a lot. She's kind of a diva. Hard to get along with. The lead actress or the understudy? The stage hand shrugs at you, adjusting her glasses. Mm, both, I guess. I'm not part of the play, so I, I didn't have much drama with anyone. Even though your boyfriend hooked up with someone else on set? Uh, that was before I met him. I see. Thank you. Her arms have to fold themselves across her chest, like armor. You can tell she's deep in thought, preoccupied by whatever is pulling her focus away from your interrogation. That's normal for someone in such close proximity to a murder. She doesn't want to dwell on it, and she's afraid. Afraid that the pointed end of your questions will cut her. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. Well, hmm. Wait, was it the... Which op... Oh, wait, was it the... Sorry, I'm getting... I was trying to think. Which option actually triggered the... Offering for him to go get a play? Because I'm wondering if she's going to do the same. Because I think it was the... When we did the last clue, right? I just, just had like a thought in the back of my head. Like, maybe it's going to pop up for all of them. And whoever we actually ask to go get it is going to be the next one to be killed or something. Because like, this is a demo. It's going to have a stopping point. But... The actual full game is meant to have five endings, so... Or it may not go like that at all, but it, it was a thought. Can I have a closer look at that? Do you think it isn't real? No, no, I've never seen a police badge up close. If I ever need to make one, this could help. It's not the same as a police badge. Actually, you can just order one online. Oh, really? That's interesting. That, that is... Jesus, what are you doing? Calm down, it's holstered. Safety on. Still, God, why show me that at all? Uh, I mean, I, I had the option. Where did you get that? It was in the director's office. I take it you wrote it? Yeah, it was supposed to be for her eyes only. You didn't, um, read it, did you? I haven't. I was more curious about the play you were supposed to put on tonight. The police seemed to think that it might be relevant to the case. That's what they implied. My boyfriend has his copy if you need one. It's not like he's getting any use out of it now. All oh, right, she wouldn't have a copy, would she? Okay, my theory breaks. Although it could be, well, hmm, we'll see. Just, if you do read mine, it's, it's a first draft. Really rough, that's all. Hmm, okay. So, I want him to go, but I, it just feels like, why give me a choice, you know? Well, actually, no, to be fair, the choice could simply be because if you went to that option first, You'd, you'd want to still interrogate him. So it's not necessarily that significant. Okay, I think we'll... Hmm, okay. I think we'll still do it last, maybe. Because we might have to, like, go back to each person with the play or something. Okay, I just want to be saved. So if we, if we need to backtrack, I thought that'll be fine. Now, just to be sure, there's no one else... Hanging around down here, right? I also have to check if the exits work. The exits did not work. I didn't think they would, but I had to try. I guess we'll start with interrogates. Finally. And I thought you would never I thought you were never gonna get to me. Let's get this over with. Sorry for your wait, and to make you answer these questions again. I'm sure this is painful for you. I don't mind the questions. It's the time you're wasting that's a pain. She's hardly looking at you. The message she's transmitting is easy to receive. Your questions are burdensome. She's more interested in pacing the stage, mouthing her words. You seem in a hurry to get back to normal. You know what they say, the show must go on. I've been rehearsing for this entire semester. I'm not going to let anything slow me down. That's kind of a callous attitude, don't you think? I mean, interestingly though, it kind of like at least puts her on the innocent side, right? Because... Obviously, if there's a murder, she's not going to be able to do the play. So if she's serious about that, like, kind of takes suspicion off her. Hmm. That's kind of a callous attitude, don't you think? 
Sounds like it's what you think. Listen, I didn't know her very well. The victim. It sucks something happened to her. It makes me feel creepy even being here. Like maybe whoever did is still watching. But I'm not giving up after all the work I've put into this play. You can think whatever you want about that. She tilts her jaw upward, a proud and protective gesture. I would have thought you'd be closer to the victim than anyone. She was the understudy for your role, wasn't she? Yeah, but she might as well not have even been on set. Like, I'm not going to miss that sh this shot for anything. She had no chance of getting on stage as long as I was around. Do you think it's possible whoever killed her might have thought the same? You mean like someone was trying to hurt me, but got her instead? Fuck. I didn't think about that. Can you tell me anything more about her? Anything at all? Nope. She was dating our illustrious lead actor though. You can try asking him. He's backstage, reading over the script, which means swapping spit with the stage hand. He was saying he was dating the victim, but also seeing the stage hand? I really try to stay out of it. I'm just here for the show. Like I told him multiple times. Now, if that's all. She returns her focus to moving, taking deliberate steps along a path long memorized, reciting her lines with a fierce intensity. You've met people like her. People who channel their fear into an exoskeleton of composure and drive. People who know they'll never start moving again if they stop for even a moment. Hmm, okay. Badge. Oh wow, is that your badge? It is. Wow, you're like legit. Almost like a real detective. <laughs> it's like it almost sounded okay. Look at that big man. What, are you going to start shooting in the middle of the auditorium? Put that away before I call the real cops. You're embarrassing. I I'm going to stop taking my gun out, man. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Oh my god, can I keep it? No, I think I'll hold on to it. But I'm guessing you know what this is. <laughs> yeah, the next great stage play in the making. I'm more interested in the script for the play you were supposed to put on tonight. Do you have a copy I can have? Not on me. I've had my lines memorized for weeks. But Lee should have his on him. He's backstage. Ah, damn, my theory did not pan out at all. I, I feel like that could totally be a thing uh, with this kind of setup. Like, whoever actually goes off to get the thing in locker room or whatever, like, gets killed or something. It does seem like we do need to do that to progress, though. We've done everything else. Oh, we, yeah, okay, it's just there now. Okay, cool. You got it. I'll be right back. Hmm. I'm still kind of wondering. I'm, I'm still feeling that he's going to get killed part, though. Where did that kid go with the play? Maybe outside? Oh, wait. Where did that kid get to with the play? Maybe outside? Anything new from you? No, okay. I think we just head outside and I'm I'm guessing he's gonna be a little bit dead. Like just a little bit. Maybe, maybe a lot. Actually, definitely a lot. I assume we're just heading out here? Hey. Oh, okay. You seem to be alive. Hmm. None of my theories are working out so well, but that's probably good since it involves the cast dying. <laughs> or the characters? Cast, I guess, both? Don't mind me. I got the script you asked for. I hope it helps, man. He hands you a thick booklet, the clean rows of printed letters smudged here and there. Annotations cling to the margins. Stage directions, notes on the line delivery, nothing out of the ordinary. The play itself is called The King in Yellow. The King in Yellow? Never heard of it. What can you tell me about it? Uh, it's hard to describe. You should read it for yourself. It's not long. I'll look it over then. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Yeah, if there's anything else I can do, just let me know, man. He heads backstage, leaving you to thumb through the script on your own. The pages scrape the pad of your fingertips as you do. You make to skim the words, but you find your eyes drawn to each draw. <laughs> you make to skim the words, but find your eyes drawn fast to each letter. Something in your gut tells you it would be offensive to flip through with no regard for the contents. You should relish the crafting of this. The care put into each word. You read. Slowly. Almost lovingly. It's a story of masks, magics, ritual, and sacrifice. The dialogue is lush and poetic, compelling to read. But it tells the tale of people spurred to madness. Driven to a gory bush... I have no idea what that word is. Spurred to madness, driven to a gory... Bashanal? 
I'm gonna go with that. Compelling to read, but it tells a tale of people spurred to madness, driven to a gory bastional wherein they slaughter each other like cattle. The pages are gilded with gold, they're steeped in blood. Every machination, every event that unfolds, is in service to the titular character, the King in Yellow. The characters are puppets, embodiments of... Wait, what? The characters are puppets, embodiments of his virtues, vessels for his power. Keep reading, yes. The King orchestrates his own play from every angle. He is in the rafters above the characters, the actors as they enact his will. He is in the beams below their feet. He is in the words on the page and the words in their mouths. The more you read, the more solid his presence feels, invasive, all-encompassing. Suddenly you're not certain you're reading the play. Perhaps you're in it. Perhaps his fingers are flipping the pages. Perhaps every word you've spoken thus far has been his. That's how real it becomes, manifested by your thoughts so solidly that you feel certain he made you think them. What is this? Sure. You gasp, drawing in a breath that pains your lungs. Your head is swimming. You try to fling the paper away from you, but your hand refuses to do anything but clutch it. The writing is beautiful. It's terrible. You need to keep reading. Keep reading. Like bleeding ink, like the velvet interior of a mask, everything goes blank. End of demo. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, first of all, I really liked it. Second of all, I actually recorded this specifically because it said it was going to be like 10 minutes. I don't know how you would do that in 10 minutes, man. I, I feel like I've been recording for a while. It's not crazy long. Um, but yeah, I was aiming for a quick one because I didn't have too much time. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I like to read everything, obviously, and recording it, like speaking aloud, is slower. Um, but I feel like it would be a real rush through... Like, real speed reading through just one-to-one -to, -one to hit ten minutes. Um, yeah, that's fine though, obviously. I enjoyed it. So, I assume that the implications are kind of that... I don't know, that someone is acting as the king in yellow. Like, the person who called us is setting things in motion. Um, and so, I don't know if that's like... Actually, one thing that wasn't... So, who is the king in yellow in the play? Like, is it that guy, the lead actor? Because, I mean, the lead actor would be playing the King in Yellow, right? So, is he acting as the King in Yellow, calling us, setting the things in motion, even though he seems innocent enough and pretty chill? Someone else who read the play and got weird about it? Because that was, like, at the end, kind of got weird there. Everything was pretty grounded up until the end. Like, that, that kind of went above... Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But I guess that that's kind of the best I can take from it at the moment. That someone is essentially playing the King of Yellow in real life. King in Yellow, I mean. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, let me know what you guys thought. I thought it was really good. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I am definitely looking forward to continuing. It's, um, it's definitely more like a... It borders on visual novel, I feel like. Um, which is fine for me. Like, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, it does seem like there is, like, because there is, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know, just, just rambly thinking aloud here. Um, I, I like the heavy dialogue and getting into it like that, but I think, um, it is still good as it is, you know. Um, I mean, like, when I say it's like a visual novel, I still really appreciate the way it actually, the RPG Maker style and the unique art style and actually being in the world and stuff like I wouldn't want it to be a pure vision novel like I, I think it uh, blends well nowadays at the moment is what I'm trying to say <laughs> just uh, for reference I'm running on like three hours sleep so bear with me but uh, it was good I enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching I appreciate it be well and uh, yeah I'm gonna go thank you be well bye bye, -bye. thank you for watching did I say that Maybe. I need sleep. Bye-bye.